Hello guys, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. My name is Benga Adeyemo. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and I'm also a Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Today, let's talk about how you can use Visual Studio Code to do what is called rebind and clone for your Power BI reports that is on your Power BI service, right? So you might be in a situation whereby you might need to refresh your Power BI reports on Power BI service, or you might need to change your data source to a new data source, right? Without having to open your Power BI service at all, or without having to uh, even do anything on your Power BI desktop. So how are you gonna do this? So if you look at uh, my screen, you will see that I have a workspace called first workspace so i'll go to workspaces just to show you i have two workspaces here there's one called first workspace i'm going to click on the first workspace and in this workspace i have one report and i have two semantic models now the first thematic model the data that is inside of this one is from 2014 to 2015 and this is the new semantic model that was just published recently and this one is from 2014 to 2018 so this one is the updated uh updated semantic model that has the updated data right uh this one is the, the old uh, semantic model right uh this is the model that bets this report right so when i when i published this report from my power bi desktop i had this uh, semantic model, the WPPUG first project, and I also have the WPPUG uh, first project, which is the reports and the semantic model together. You know, when you publish a Power BI report, uh, what also comes with the reports is not just the report alone, but what also comes with is the semantic model. And when we say semantic model in Power BI, we mean the connected data, uh, the transformations. Number three is the relationship between the tables and number four is the calculation. So those four things are what makes up your semantic model. Now, in these two scenarios, now in this scenario rather, I have uh, two semantic model. This one is the old one. This one is the updated one, right? This one has more data. You don't let me call it updated, but I'll just say it, it has more uh, data than this one. But this one does not come with any report. So it's just the model alone that, that was uh, published, right? So now let's say I want to now uh, change the source of this one. So the source of this one is this, right? The I want to change, redirect the source to now, uh, the, the, the source of this should now be redirected to this one, right? Which is the second semantic model that I have in this workspace. So how am I going to do that? Now, let's say uh, I want to do this. I might not even need to open my Power BI service at all for anything, right? But before I show you, before I open the Visual Studio code, let me open the report so that you see how the report looks like. So I open in a new tab and I come here and this is the report, right? I got this inspiration from Nicholas. Uh, I got this report. It was the one that built the original report so i'm only replicating what he has built and also shared on his linkedin uh feeds now you see that if i go to my year month name what you will see is that i have only 2014 to 2015 uh data sales data inside here i can slice and dice and see everything and everything looks good no problem okay so now i want to so let's assume I'm, i don't have access to power bi service I'm in a remote environment, or uh, maybe I'm using another laptop, and somebody calls and say, oh, I have updated uh, a new semantic model on that um, workspace, and I need you to redirect the source of that report to the newly published semantic model in that workspace. So how am I going to do this? So I'm going to open the Visual Studio Code now. I'm going to open the Visual Studio Code is opening. Oh, it opened on my second screen, so I have to bring it here, right? So that, what I'm going to do is that I have uh, 
all of this, the explorer, the search, the source control, and all of these, the extension. So I already have Power BI Studio extension. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to come here and go, I'm going to uninstall this extension. So I will show you how you can install the extension, right? So what you are going to do uh, is, is this. So I'm going to co come here to extensions. And if, if I don't have it at all, let me refresh this. It's not meant to show. Okay, so this is how it's going to look like. Let me close this also. So you're not going to see anything here. You're going to see different kind of, uh, uh, you go to the popular ones and the recommended ones. So I'm going to go to this search here and I'm going to type Power BI. Power BI and you're going to see something like Power BI Studio, right? So I'm going to install Power BI Studio. So I'm click on install here. Right, it's installed now, right? So it's telling me that Power BI Studio wants me to sign in using my Microsoft account. So I might decide not to sign in here. I might even decide to close all of this. And I'll go to my Power BI Studio here, the extension that I have already installed. And I'm going to click on login, right, on this workspaces. And I'll say allow. And it's going to prompt me to log in into my, uh, it's going to prompt me to log in into my uh, Microsoft account. So I'm going to log in into this Microsoft account and I click on the account here. And when I click on the account, now when I click, you see that when I log into that account, I'm seeing all the workspaces that I have. The same thing that I have, I have my Power BI service is what I'm seeing here. Right, these are all my workspaces. This is in case I have the apps, I have a pipeline. So I have some, you know, uh, deployment pipelines in my Power BI service. Uh, it's telling me that my premium capacity, I'm, I'm using premium per user capacity. And in case I'm using any gateway, I don't have any gateway installed. So you are seeing no gateway here. Interesting, right? And when you, when you, um, what's it called? When you expand this workspace, you will see all the data sets that you have in that workspace. You will see all the reports in that workspace. If you are a dashboard, you will see it. If there are data flows, if there are any permissions, you will see a list of everybody permitted, you know, giving permission to that workspace. So it's very interesting. And also my test workspace. So you can you, you can you can view all the workspaces that you have in your Power BI service. Right. So in this case now, I'm, I'm going to show you two things here. I want to show you how you can do what is called rebind. Right. I want to show you how to do what is called rebind. And I also want to show you uh, how to do what is called clone. So when, I, when, we, when we say rebind, now rebind here means that I'm redirecting the source of my report, the data source of my report to another source. So if you look at the data set here, I have the first data set, right? And I have the one called updated. But I have the WPP UG first project, and I also have the WPP UG first project updated, right? So this report, the data source of the data set or data source for this report, this report you are seeing here is this first one, right? And this one is from 2014, 2015, which I showed you now on Power BI service, right? And now I now want to do what is called rebind. So redirect the source to this or this one called updated. So what I'm going to just do, very simple, is to come here and drag it on top of this one called updated. And I will see two options here called rebind and clone, right? And I'm going to click on rebind. I'm going to click on rebind, right? So it's still loading, still loading. And you will see here, that it's you see a message here rebind reports succeeded now how am i going to know that this has actually worked right i can actually just come here and refresh and refresh right then i'll go back to my power bi service now don't forget that this report is only from 2014 to 2015 but when i did rebind i think that i redirected the source to a new data set how will i now know that this has actually worked i can come here and refresh this page, right? I can come here and refresh this page, and I come here, and now, wow, see the magic. Now I've seen my report has been updated. Now I, I have sales data from 2014 
to 2018. Is this not interesting? So you can use Visual Studio Code to refresh your data set. You can use it to redirect the source of your data set, right? Is it not, is this not interesting? Now let's do the second one, which I want to show you, uh, which is the second, which is the uh, clone, right? You know, I just showed you how to do rebind. Now I want to show you how to clone. So you can also clone, uh, where, so if clone here, what it means is that you are creating a copy of your reports, right? You are creating a copy of your reports. So let's say now that I also want to, the same way I did my rebind, I also want to, uh, um, at the same time, clone. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to come to this uh, report. I'm going to drag it over that same updated uh, data set or semantic model or whatever you want to call it. I drag it on top of it. So now there are two options. Now, if I drag it on this one, right, it means that I, I either want to rebind or I want to clone, right? But in this case, I want to clone, but I also want the data set to be redirected to uh, the new, the new, uh, the updated data set, the one called um, updated, right? So I come here, I drag it on top, I drag the report and I see clone, right? I click on clone, right? So I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to even name it here. I'm going to give it a name, right? So I only, I'll just call it, uh, let me just call this one version, version, or let me just, let me just leave it on the word copy. I'll just say copy two, copy two, and I'm going to press enter, right? I'm going to press enter and you see it already here. Now, when you go to your Power BI service, when you go to your Power BI service, go to your workspace, click on that workspace, and you already see the report, the copy, or without even opening your Power BI service at all. This is very interesting. I right click here, I open link in a new tab, and when I see, when I open that link, then I mean to the second report that we just created, and you will see that it is from 2014 to 2018. So this is a copy, right, of that original report, but now with, the, with a new data source, right? With an updated data source. Now, let's now go back to uh, my Visual Studio code again. So let's say I want to clone this report, but I want it to still reference, I want it to reference the uh, first data set here, right? I want it to reference the first data set here. So what I'm going to do is to just come here and drag it on top of the first data sets here, right? And I'll say close. So this one is going to actually, I'll say clone, right? And I'll say copy three, right? So this one, what it's going to do now is that it's going to create another copy, right? But this one, is the, the, the data source is going to be referencing now, is going to be the first one that I have in my uh, workspace, the first uh, data set or thematic model that I have in my workspace, right? Now that I have that, if I refresh now on this, my Power BI service, I'm going to see this copy theory. And if I come here and I open link in new tab, right? If I open link in new tab, and this one is going to be from 2014 to 2015. So guys, I have come to the end of my video. If you enjoy my, this video, and you want to enjoy more of the video like uh, like this don't forget to like share and subscribe and don't forget to tell your friends about this channel share it within your community share it within within your friends within your colleagues at your workspace let's promote power bi together let's enjoy power bi together so this is the end of my video today on rebind and clone with visual studio code right thank you very much guys see you in my next video god bless you